So Blake, the news today is this coffee company that Tom's is beginning and launching. Can you tell us sort of, uh, maybe we can rewind to when you first got the idea. Sure, so I got the idea almost just a little over a year ago and it really came from our focus on turning Tom's from not just an aid provider but also economic development. So one of the things we've been trying to focus on is, you know, we've always been known you buy a pair of shoes, we give a pair of shoes. You buy a pair of our sunglasses, we help give sight. But how can we actually create economic development in the countries we're giving? Now, how that leads me to coffee is that I got so excited about creating economic development in the countries that we give in, I started looking at who was doing it the best. And what I found was some of the best, you know, enablers of economic development in places like Malawi and Rwanda and Guatemala and Peru are coffee farmers. So by us entering into the coffee business and directly trading with these farmers themselves, we can ensure that they're getting the prices uh, that, that's the best for their, their product and we can help them get a higher yield on their crops. So specifically, let's get into what it's going to look like. I guess there will be Tom's Cafes, but then of course you can also buy the beans. So yeah. can we talk about kind of where those will be available, what the plan is? Sure. So, so the model with Tom's has always been one for one. So we've always said, you know, if we buy something, we're going to give something. So when we got into the coffee business, we knew that we could do, create economic development, but our customers would say, well, what's the give? And so the interesting thing about that is, is that the number one ingredient used to make super premium coffee is water. And in these communities, these farmers are using this water to wash the beans, to prepare them, and to preserve the quality. But in those same communities, there's not always safe water to drink or to bathe or to clean with. So our one-for-one -one give is, you know, for instance, with the beans, the bag of beans we sell, if you buy a bag of a Tom's coffee, uh, as say at the grocery store like Whole Foods, we will give one week of water to a person in need. So one bag equals one week. In our cafes, every drink that you, we purchase is one day of clean water. And so every purchase that you're having with Tom's Roasting Company, you're actually contributing not only in the economic development, but making sure that these communities have you know, safe water to drink. So you were getting at this a little earlier, but the other interesting part of this news is not just the immediate launch of the coffee company, but in the bigger picture, you're going to be trying to enter a new business every year with this one-for-one -one yep. model. Yes. Uh, does coffee and whatever you end up doing next or the next year or the year after that, do these have the same potential for um, diversification as businesses? I mean, what makes you think that the model will work as well as shoes have worked? You know, kind of my vision for One for One is it's much bigger than the shoes. And that's why we entered the eyewear space two years ago. Uh, we see that the customer really gets excited about being able to buy something and know that something else is happening. Like that is the magic, right? And so this can work in a number of different industries. It can also, there's a lot of, you know, additional products within the fashion lifestyle industry for us to expand to too. So, I mean, if you look at, you know, the whole bag category, apparel, watches, headphones, I mean, all these things that are sold within our existing retailers, I believe that there can be a one-for-one -one give associated with those products. So I think this premium coffee is exactly that again. And so one of the things that we're doing, and a big part of this business model for us, is on at toms.com, we're launching a coffee club. And so you sign up for the coffee club and every month you get a different type of coffee from a different place and you get the story of the farmers who harvested the beans. So you really can connect. We're taking a very different approach to our actual cafes. We're creating community spaces and these really are spaces that we want people to come and hang out all day long. We want them to bring their dog, their kids. We want it to be a very non-threatening, non-intimidating space, um, but a space that more feels like someone's home and less like a traditional coffee coffee shop. I think that is going to be an advantage to us. And we can afford to do these larger spaces because we're also supporting these spaces through the sale of our shoes and our eyewear. So unlike other competitors in the coffee space, they have to be very specific about only this much square footage and this many seating. We can go for a little bit more non-traditional spaces. We're taking over houses, like a house in Austin. We took over a house in LA. We can be more experiential and also create more of a community feel because we're not depending on one revenue stream. We have multiple revenue streams coming into these spaces.